and all gathered here. It is on the occasion of guest lecture to be given by our uh, external expert, Dr. Bala Sarasadi, Madam, on Entrepreneurship Opportunities and Agriculture. It's my bound duty to welcome uh, the Dean SPGS uh, for this uh, lecture, Dean Forestry, external examiner, and the scientists offline as well as online, and also dear student friends, who is attending this lecture online as well as offline. And uh, it is my duty to introduce our external examiner to the forum, uh, Madam Dr. Bala Saraswati. She is associated with us for more than 32 years. And I am proud, I am very happy to share with you that she is our alumni. She has done her UG at uh, Madre campus. And she has done her PG at the Coimbatore campus. And uh, her guide is Dr. Ravindra. I think uh, you will not be known, and some of the staff will be knowing that Dr. RJ Ravindra is a well known entomologist and he is a specialist in biocontrol of insects. And he has been the director of NBER, you know, that National Bureau of Agricultural Important Insects. He was the director also. He's a, he's a very great, eminent uh, entomologist. And she is uh, his student. So you know the caliber, you will understand the caliber of madam. And um, now she is uh, the scientist D and head uh, a project monitoring, coordination and evaluation at the Central Silk Board Bangalore. And I am also very happy when I mention the name Central Silk Board now uh, uh, compared to previous years. Because now we have entered on MOU with Central Silk Board. Of course, with the um, help from our Dean SPGS, and we are entered on MOU, and uh, we are progressing better after MOU. So, we are in always in frequent touch with the uh, directors of uh, CSB, CSR, and PA Mysore, and also the other institutes of uh, Central Silk Board. And uh, now, Madam is she's coordinating, she is in the project monitoring or coordination evaluation cell. And she is coordinating the, the projects, that is the projects, inter-institutional projects and also the pro inter-collaborative projects at the, the um, international level also. So coming to her uh, by data again, she has 32 years of uh, service and she has excelled uh, in uh, Tilgoa production and farm management and also on the extension side. So coming to the um, uh, the extension aspects, sir. Sure, she has got uh, that uh, she is excelled well and she received the award from the um, uh, chairman or the member secretary uh, for her work on the cluster promotion program in Tamil Nadu, particularly on the promotion of biotech sericulture. And she also got uh, another award by her uh, the immense involvement and dedication in uh, All India experimental. Uh, projects in Mulberry, uh, particularly a phase 3 in Krishnagiri districts. And she has uh, more than handled more than a dozen projects and he has evolved technologies related to seed technology and she has brought out more than 50 publications and books and lot of pamphlets and uh, folders and other uh, things for the benefit of the farmer community. And uh, she is also has guided the students uh, as part of uh, research she has also guided the students, about 10 MSc students and PhD students, she has guided under the Periyar University. So she has a lot more to say about Madam. And I am also, on my personal behalf, I am also associated with her for the past 30 years. Whatever happens in uh, here or the sharing of information on pest control or whatever may be. And she is also very happy to be a part of our uh, Department of Agriculture. Whenever any thesis assignment is given, she feels very happy and she accepts the offer. And even she is more even now, uh, she, uh, she awaits the returns. And even now, she is very uh, happy about uh, coming over to the department. And if you have any time, we will also have interaction uh, with you after the session. And we know that sericulture is an important field uh, where it's a very remunerative enterprise. A lot of byproducts are being involved as a part of the Kapoor production program. And hence, there are a lot of entrepreneurship opportunities in agriculture. So it's a good time that uh, some uh, lot more uh, uh, opportunities are there in agriculture. Such opportunities will be shared by Madam uh, for the benefit of you. So I welcome once, once again all the participants for this uh, lecture. 
and uh, now it's my great pleasure to invite madam for the lecture thank you it's my immense pleasure and it's my privilege to stand here as an alumni of ene so as uh, mani mehla madam told i have lot of affinity with this department of ce is to say that i feel proud to stand here and deliver a talk on this uh, entrepreneurship of the in silicon so this uh, i think uh, this session is attended by various kind of uh, participants students lecturers and the department faculty including me all are on line so here as we know any entrepreneurship okay, development it has lot of it should have lot of potential in terms of profit so silicon is also an important avenue to generate the profit so if any entrepreneurship if it, it should be successful means first to point how much income we will get so in these aspects the following points which we are going to discuss here it will be very much useful for these entrepreneurs or the students who are going to become entrepreneurs and the students they are going to motivate others to take up this venture so these informations will be definitely useful i am 100% confident on my uh, uh, lecture on i have divided into two topics that is one is from mulberry side so from mulberry side we can say raising of mulberry this everyone knows it's just a technology how to raise nursery and this technology is very well available in our website also and this to raising nursery how a farmer or entrepreneur he gets income so this things no uh, he every now and then i will add my research i mean you know, experience in the field of agriculture because for more than 20 years i worked in uh, extension in tamil nadu so coming to raising of this nursery a few years back i will quote an example that in which it is a place called kurukote where farmers lacks of nursery which we know exactly is there is and uh, actually they were thinking we have raised this uh, sapling how to dispose but what happened on fine morning this maharashtra government started encouraging the farmers to take up this silicon so because of this a lot of demand from maharashtra so the saplings from kurukote lacks of for we know saplings from kurukote has been transported to maharashtra state to train so the entrepreneur the farmer who has raised the nursery he got lot of money so on seeing this one many farmers also they started this entrepreneur so this is again an example again mulberry leaf production mulberry leaf production is nothing but just like any other plant if you uh, plant the uh, cutting of mulberry it will grow if you dig it definitely it will grow so the leaf production this mulberry leaf production is consumed by the farmers they are influenced by the development of by growing this crop so this mulberry leaf production also it is important because some farmers what they are doing they grow mulberry leaf and they are selling it or sometimes what will happen they have the mulberry plantation and they are giving it to please consume panradhingala so they will be taking up this in form way so these things also it is going on like that then coming to this one now the pedigree of uh, this uh, uh, bible type breed so actually when it gets the breeder start it starts from the research institute then what will happen from the breeder institute go to p4 level we got few stations which are working on this p4 p3 from p4 station it will go to p3 then p2 finally from p2 it will go to p1 okay so p1 where p1 dfls will be prepared and those dfls no it will be p3 
given to the adapted seed layers. So these cocoons will be procured by the drainages. So there comes the drainage. It is an, again an, another venture. Establishment of drainages. And drainages, they are purchasing the cocoons from the adapted seed layers and there the male uh, the female moths, male moths wearing the DFLs will be prepared. This DFLs either if demand is there, it will be acid treated, or what they will do, the hibernated DFLs, it will go to the cold storage and it will be kept in hibernation shape. Whenever the farmer requires, they will release it and they will supply to the farmer. So some farmers, quite a bit, they are brushing, means they will take the DFLs from the grain again. So nowadays, the private drainages are is the example in Udumal pit, there is one private drainage is done. So, like this, and all these activities are controlled by Central Seed Act of Central Seed so, There are rules and regulations. So, here comes the drainage, another one opportunity, it comes the choppy centers, choppy rearing centers. So from the drainages, either farmer if he wants to brush directly, he will take the DFL or the Chatki center owner, he will take the lanes from the drainages and they will supply the, after completion of second instance, they will supply the healthy Chatki modes. So, they, so here again it is an opportunity. Again, cocoon production. As all we know, this is a commercial silicone cocoon production. Here, farmer, what he will, he will have the mulberry plantation, he will have silicone rearing house, he will rear the silicone, and simply he will dispose his cocoons in the government cocoon markets. So, these are all from mulberry cells, mulberry side. And again, another side, there are some input trading, biocontrol agent, mass multiplication, mobile disinfection units, mounting call, cocoon shell product uh, through as well, handicrafts. So, these things are also important. Apart from this one, there is another sector, post cocoon sector. I think I focused my talk on pre cocoon center because post cocoon sector, again, that is also an, another uh, uh, entrepreneurship opportunity where we, from the cocoons, the thread can be real. Then, from the real, uh, again, it will go to the products of the so, it will go. That is another sector. For all these things, I will tell you, even for raising mulberry nursery, this is nursery, the government of Tamil Nadu it is giving subsidy. And again, for establishment of CRC, Central Cell Board, as well as the DOS, both they contribute and they give subsidy. So, for many of the essential activities, the, the farmer or the entrepreneur who is venturing into this, they will get the subsidy from the government. So, this is also another one important term. So, coming to us, already I told you, there, there are some successful indicators. So, here, when you will get the, get more profit, it should be large scale production. Always, you should think of in a large scale. If you produce a small quantity, your profit, it won't be of up to that level. Even we used to tell, per acre, per year, you rear up to 1,200 DFLs. Your maximum consumption of DFLs, it should be 1,200 per acre per year. But average consumption is now 600 DFLs only. So, we should increase the brushing of these DFLs. So, always think of large scale production, then only your profit will be more. And the efficient management of resources, this is again very important factor. The resource use efficiency is very much important. And planning of production and marketing. And normally it is Indian based and the incentives also. And uh, uh, technology adoption. This is also an important wherever if you need a successful this thing, then definitely you have to adopt all the technologies in terms of uh, Agriculture or in terms of your silicon cotton production. So, these uh, new technologies you should be in a position to adopt. Then, as uh, as a normal, this thing the forward and backward linkages, the, the inputs or the disinfection, or what you are going to give, that is also important. Again, nowadays it has become the 
system of uh, door delivery. Everything we want door delivery. So our, seri our sericulture also it is not exempt yet. So sericulture also we will supply succulents at the doors of farmers. So they are happy. They need not move here and there. So farmer is placing in a through four and he is getting the succulents at his doorsteps. He gets the inputs at his doorsteps. So these are the reasons developing this uh, digital view. Then again, post is supposed to supply crop inspection. This is also very important. This crop inspection is very important for the successful harvest of a crop. And innovations. Nowadays, we are learning from the farmers. We are learning from the entrepreneurs. New technologies also it is coming from farmers and the entrepreneurs. So these things we have to refine it and we have to accept that one and one fine day we will refine it and it will come out as a new technology. And as you already know, it is a, a, a monthly income, assumed monthly income it, they can take and uh, it involves the family labor also and it is very much suitable for women. The women folk, just like how they are feeding the babies, so just uh, they have to feed two times per day for the silk ones, just like their babies. That's all their work. So women are very much comfortable uh, uh, with this uh, uh, enterprise. Because morning, what they are doing, they will pack up all uh, their kids uh, and their uh, spouse for job, everything. Afterwards, they will give feeding for the silk ones. They will uh, attend other works at home. And the remaining evening also, Meaning also same, they will give one more feeling. So that's all the so women now, they feel very comfortable yeah. with this. Stuff. And again now, what happened? The byproducts generated. So nowadays what happened? The focus has been given um, much on this aspect, this byproduct development. And again now, ultimately, it is very much helpful to alleviate the poverty in rural areas. So here comes how this uh, silkworm spinning cocoons, which are used in the pharmaceutical industry for preparation of medicines. And the thread which is used for surgical purposes. And the research proved that silkworms have maximum blood glucose lowering effect and the substances were found to reduce blood glucose level. So silkworm larvae can be used to multiply white muscat and fungus to use in IPM of other crops. These are all the avenues which we can think of. And uh, I wish to brief it here from mulberry leaves, dried mulberry leaves, we got dry powder. Then the, from the extract mulberry leaf oil, the supplement cast capsules are coming and anti-diabetic tablets. And from the dry powder, some biscuits, herbal tea, and leaf base to tomato soup, all these things. And from fresh mulberry leaf, now silkworm feed, dairy animal feed, etc. Or now in the recent times, it has been there. Some studies are in pipeline also. So, coming to the uh, medicinal value of uh, mulberry plant. So here comes the, your tea production and mulberry fruits, it has got a lot of uh, um, um, free radicals, so which has uh, helped in many ways. And mulberry fruit, jam and jelly, then pickle, then wine preparation and uh, the uses of mulberry stick in paper fiber industry and uh, mulberry wood in energy production. So some mulberry sticks, uh, they are used in mushroom production also. So coming to mulberry leaves, it has got a natural medicinal values, anti-diabetic effect, then it contains minerals also, it activates bones and immune system, uh, rich in amino acid antioxidants and it is suitable for all age group and this has been uh, licensed also, uh, the product of uh, uh, CSR and DA Mysore. And coming to this mulberry fruit drink. This is also very important. It promotes the healthy cholesterol and mulberry fruit wine, the small dose, it is good for uh, heart and stomach diseases. So these are all other uh, benefits of this mulberry fruit based uh, drinks. And even some other foreign countries, these are all the products which uh, they are 
to derive from the mulberry fruit. And this photo shows how uh, a person is make, using the mulberry fruits for basket weaving. And coming to other utilities of uh, silk. So, as all we know, silk is a natural product. It has got its fineness and strength is very important. A shining, softness, elegance, uh, durability, and it has got a lot of tensile properties also. So, silk proteins, they have moisture retention and UV ray blocking properties since they are used in the cosmetics also. So, uh, there are some lotions, creams, and night creams, the baby cream, even toothpaste, and the utility of silk from uh, this uh, uh, cocoon and uh, silk. These are all the different uh, field or the products which are very much useful in um, cosmetics. And uh, this is another aspect which we have to, nowadays, uh, this is an important uh, uh, research, field of research. So here, this silk for fiber and nanoparticles. As we all know what uh, this cocoon is made of, this cocoon is made of nothing but the protein. So the protein, it contains fibroid cells. So here, the promising drug delivery due to their biodegradable properties. This is again an important uh, um, aspect of using the silk fibroid nanoparticles. And they are efficient vehicles for natural antioxidant. And this thing, uh, this pro drug loaded silk fibroid nanoparticles. So, all these things you know, nowadays, uh, the, the much focus has been given on these aspects. And coming to this uh, series, sericin. Actually, series in normally 20 to 30 percent. This is unbound uh, silk, nothing but the uh, glycoprotein you can see in that uh, photograph. So, normally, this uh, series in no, it will be growing in the waste water where uh, the daily process is going on. So, 50,000 tons of series in is being discarded in that uh, waste water of a uh, daily. So, these things can be used. So, because of this one, the contaminated uh, uh, water, so this sericin can be used effectively. It's a strong economical and a social environmental impact and it has got anti-wrinkle and a moistening effect also. So sericin has got a, a, a role uh, which, which we are wasting it. Actually, we can think of using this one. Even uh, yeah, in one meeting, we came to know that uh, uh, the country like uh, Cuba and all of they are uh, generating and manufacturing this sericin. Uh, 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 as course, uh, they don't have the uh, the material for extracting it, but we got a lot of this thing. So we can think of uh, extracting this thing, so, and which can be used in the other um, cosmetic industry also. And this slide source how sericin can be used in different fields. Textile, industrial, medicine, food and cosmetics, all these things can be used. And coming to the silicon PP. So, silicon PP it contains maximum 50 to 60 percent protein. Fats are there and vitamins are also there. So, and again from the reading units, we then the people which we are wasting. So, now we are trying to develop this one like poultry feed, fish feed or some special oil applied from the silicon PP oil. So, these things can be used to make different products and some are in pipeline and some are already this fish feed and are already packing but it means they are going to commercialize. So, poultry feed, I think it is under a uh, trial along with the, um, our normal veterinary college and research institute. This trial they are going to take up. And uh, coming to this one now, this uh, spent PP also, we have got a lot of uh, tons of uh, spent PP which we are wasting. That can be used as a material and our research can be focused on these aspects also. Uh, silicon PP because it contains high amount of protein, amino acids and good source of uh, uh, lipids. So, these can be exploited for the human and animal, animal uh, health care applications. And coming to the PIPA oil, uh, already this one, um, this PIPA oil is very much useful in the medical industry as well as the cosmetics. 
and even this also this uh, um, alpha linoleic acid and other things and all our institute has developed it and technology has been patented also and this is the method how this alpha linoleic acid has been extracted into the omega p fatty acid so from the sipon pp oil this has been uh, patented also and this uh, commercial application of this uh, because in northeastern india this eri sipon pp and all they are uh, taking it as, as a food source so like this our silk from sipon pp also we can do all this uh, on this and uh, this one uh, this cordyceps this can be also grown from this a uh, uh, silk worm so it can be used just because cord is not nowadays lot of uh, medicinal value is there for this one which can be also grow and uh, uh, the recent times this chitin phytoson this chitin and phyto chitin <coughs> it is nothing but a homo polysaccharide and uh, just like all crustacean family just like in our recent uh, form also this chitin and phytoson is very much available and the phytoson is nothing but a derivative of uh, chitin so here comes this people shell and the larval skin more it can be extracted and the wonder is uh, here this chitin and phytoson can be used as a packaging material because when we are using uh, this polythene um, polylactic acid based uh, polythene more there the food products more uh, lot of chances are there for food spoilage there is this chitin phytoson base so they got anti bacterial anti fungal all these properties are there and they don't have non toxic property and they got the uh, property of biodegradability so these things are very much useful uh, to protect our ecosystem also so this uh, <coughs> uh, waste management food processing all these things you no know, we can think of and uh, we can extend our research towards these aspects also already i told you the phytoson and which field it can be in biomedical application and cosmetic application and in the effluent treatment also and coming to i told you already this uh, as a service provider an entrepreneur can also be developed so here what happen in many of the places for, uh, there won't be any separate mounting hall and there won't be any mountage also so here on rental basis they will give this mortgage it has become a business in krishnagiri and other places and all per day per mortgage this is the cost so they will give these mortgages mm -hmm. on rent basis so now this is it is coming under service provider so this is also an uh, the uh, recent uh, development in uh, our uh, entrepreneurship development and see this table shows how we can uh, develop, uh, generate the revenue and normally the cost benefit ratio is in this kind of 1 rupees you can think of for 2 rupees like this even bamboo mountages and all nowadays in kashmiri uh, district they are giving it on rent and coming to this on um, biocontrol agent mass multiplication nowadays it is uh, Uh, been attracted by many um, factors because uh, as i told you 2000 2004 uh, an outbreak of leaf roller it happened more than 100% incident was there then after few years 2008 the papaya mealybug incident came then uh, 2018 the incidence of mites yes, created lot of uh, problem so what happened farmers they started utilizing so many indiscriminate use of these things so because of this one now we face some problem like the non stinging syndrome also so if we want to address this issue definitely we have to go for this uh, uh, release of biocontrolment so now this field no it is uh, very much attracted so here also government is giving subsidy and to mass multiply these things even csrk is giving training and the example mesolithic thymus it is an important term uh, this uh, uh, biocontrol agent for ucp 
So, visually times can be MOS multiplied from either from the C-Flight people or a technology of CSR game nice is developed. Then from that one you can, even from post flight people you can MOS multiply this visually timers that can be released in the rearing house, couple markets to control this one. And the other things and all, it's pegogram and all normally for the management of other things are pest we are using. And uh, Tukra, Mealybug also, Cryptolingus, Montrosary and Acelophagus Papier. So, all these things can be mass multiplied and it can be made available readily to the farmers in time so that farmer can buy and release it. So, the technology know-how will be given by CSR and PA and they can attend training. Uh, they can get training from CSR and PA and they can start this one. And even government of Tamil Nadu also is encouraging this work. And since these things, they protect our uh, mulberry ecosystem. So much concentration has been uh, focused on these lands. And this is another important uh, mobile disinfection unit. Because your successfully harvest of silicon crop mainly it depends on your, how you are disinfecting the unit. How you you are making your rearing house free from germs so that your silicon crop would not be infected by any of the bacteria or virus. So, nowadays, what happens is mobile disinfector units. So these units they will move to the individual rarer's house. They will, because the certified crop, they will use the certified disinfectants and they will take care of uh, everything how to spray, what is the quantity of the spray solution. All these details they will be having farmer he need not worry at all. Simply they will measure the length and breadth of the rain house and they will calculate the solution. And this recent times it is uh, attracting many of the farmers. So these things also an entrepreneur can think of taking this one. And it is very much successful also. And here again. This all uh, you people may be knowing it the uh, biogas production and uh, even mushroom production and even vermicomposting also they are using and even in the biofertilizer production also silicon excreta is used as a carrier material. And uh, finally this is uh, the waste of uh, waste from drainage because nowadays in the drainage when they are not allowing the mass to emerge on its own. Before that, we are at weak holes. So that nowadays a lot of techniques are there. So through that one, the male, female, people has been segregated and they are putting in the drainage. So the natural emergence is not allowed. So this cut cocoons and all, it can be used for uh, this handicraft, which is also very much attracted uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the young entrepreneurs. And then this pipe oil also very much useful in soap paints and all. And uh, as I already already told you, silicone people powder it is also used as animal feed, fish feed, even uh, uh, along with their back to uh, fish research central fish research institute. This product has been developed and it is patented also. And uh, uh, these are all the uh, recent uh, development. Even in the defense also, it is useful in parachute system. And again, as, as I told you, as a service provider, the soil testing also it has been taken up. And based on the soil testing, soil correction has been done. And uh, the harvest, uh, how they are harvesting the issue and they are transporting to the rearing house. And per, per feed basis, like this, they are, how they are feeding into the silk walk. On cost basis, so they are taking up this one. And nowadays, even pruning also. So, at a time, pruning means they will come and take up the pruning and uh, uh, input application also. So, nowadays, fertilizer, biofertilizer, menus, all these things, all those things. So, these are some of the avenues which we can think of in a large scale, it can be taken up in a particular village. Uh, today, some uniform pruning, then same time application of menus, everything, same time they will take up. So it will become a corporate uh, business. Slowly we can think of uh, converting ourselves on a corporate basis. Definitely that will lead to the success and the successful uh, harvest of silicon crop. 
and uh, here again this um, um, this multi process management and nowadays silver mounting and cocoon harvesting also and the supply of this material disinfectants use powder like the seri polyclinic they are uh, saying so these kind of seri polyclinic also they can think of and uh, coming to this one harvesting and sorting of at a time though in a village some stuff if the farmers if they are taking up means harvesting sorting of the cocoons and transportation of the cocoons also in a big tempo they can transport the cocoons to the particular Uh, government cocoon market. This way, it will be very much helpful to the farmer. So we can think of uh, including transportation of the cocoons. It, it is an uh, avenue for uh, development of entrepreneurship in cell culture. So I think I have covered uh, many of this. Thing. Only the first cocoon which uh, I have not touched. That is uh, another uh, uh, field very. Lot of opportunities are there. Uh, automatic reeling units, starting from now, start to automatic reeling units. Because automatic reeling units, you need 800 kg of polyurethane cocoons per day. It has to be consumed. So in such a potential area, we can think of this automatic uh, uh, reeling unit establishment. That is also government subsidy is there. So this is another aspect, and that uh, that entrepreneurship opportunities are there. So that also we can improve. So these are all the opportunity availability which which either we can think of or we can motivate others. Uh, and you yourself you can think of uh, in the present scenario what kind of uh, in, in which aspect I can go through or which avenue I can select like that we can improve. So I think now I close my session. I wish to close my session, but uh, I need a lot of interaction from you people uh, since I have come here and I am very much happy. Thank you, Madam, for a very uh, elaborate and uh, useful, uh, highly useful presentation uh, for the students and even the researchers. And uh, I am very happy that uh, this is the first time I heard uh, you are telling farmer is an entrepreneur, but initially we say farmer, farmer. We are not calling farmer as an entrepreneur. So, madam, you know, we have to appreciate even a farmer is a very good yes. entrepreneur. So that uh, is very good uh, part, madam. Even a farmer hearing the news, he will be uh, almost very happy on that, right? So, on my part, I last one two thing, and I will uh, leave over the session to the other people. So, you have hinted out that we can go for a corporate farming in Sri Lanka. Even that idea, we will be having, and I have a doubt uh, whether. Uh, Let's see for a uh, like cotton or like sugar cane. Uh, well, this necessity. And for this, my view is to go for a farmer producing organization. But we don't have uh, exclusive farmer producing organization for agriculture. Recently, even you know, our university uh, focuses on FPU. So that will uh, that will develop an entrepreneurship or startup for any student or any other thing that will be useful. So uh, I want any, I want some idea whether there is any farmer producing organization is there. One person, and another one uh, with another group of those more people. But you can also highlight, madam, based on your experience, our PG students are there. Uh, some research avenues for them. So I, I have uh, seen some of the avenues like the body serves, mushroom production, excreta for those kind of things. It's a great uh, thing which I know that. And any other further uh, information uh, on your uh, experience, you can share with our PG students so that they take up a future research. Okay, thank you. Regarding uh, this uh, FP, FPO, so like other uh, agricultural commodities, there a uh, very strong FPO setup is there. So like that, we are also trying to make this kind of uh, FPO setup and uh, still. It is in the initial phase only, but one day definitely that system will come. Once it fit comes, as I told you, it will become a corporate uh, like that. It may develop. So under such condition, these kind of under entrepreneurship law will work very nice. And as Madam asked, uh, the other avenues of uh, research work. 
Uh, so nowadays, a uh, lot of research work on this biomaterial. This biomaterial, many uh, many research work, no, some parts are still uh, we left gap. Yeah. So like uh, the biomaterial in the sense, nowadays only this type in titles on all this uh, research work have been uh, taken up. And uh, some research work are in a pipeline also. So, so like this, again, now uh, many this you know, I request our uh, students to focus a uh, much on applied aspects. I feel nowadays a uh, uh, lot of gap between this applied research and biotechnological research. So nowadays everyone wants to do cutting from DNA, RNA, like that only, the molecular research. But, uh, uh, the applied aspects also parallelly we have to focus, which will, which will reach the final quickly. That is very, very, very much important. So this applied aspect, even mechanization. So small, small uh, this thing, you can uh, use your own uh, brain on seeing a farmer how much he is suffering, the drudgery aspect of any agriculture activity, if you see that one, what kind of small modification you can be changed. So if you are young mind know, or uh, immediately it will capture that one. Something we can you can you can uh, do wonders. You yourself you can innovate. So this mechanization part no, uh, still there are this drudgery part is there. So you have to see this. Thing. If you don't uh, see the farmer's condition, and uh, in which uh, like uh, disinfection, farmers are disinfecting, the fumes are coming, they are inhaling, how it can be prevented. Such things, no, you can I think it does nowadays uh, Astra like the disinfectants and all the other. Only don't really say any um, this thing. So, they, that, that kind of this thing, where drudgery is there, where farmers spending a lot of labor, so where uh, that labor uh, requirement can be reduced. So, all this thing, a small machinery for controlling weeds, or either you might have seen in agriculture, you might have seen in forestry. All those things you can try to implement, you bring it to cell culture. So, a yes, small modification, we will be very, you can do wonders. So, we will be very much helpful. And you people are, the young mind, definitely you can come up with the uh, innovations.